Okay, so we've been talking about leadership in, a, in various, various kinds of ways here tonight about the younger generation. What do you think are the most important qualities of leadership for the 21st century for your generation that's coming to flower now? Uh, and, and, and how does that contrast with what you've seen in the past? Cheryl? Um, so again, sort of watching the example of many of the young people that we've worked with over the last 25 years, um, I would say a couple of things. So I do think um, innovation is a, re is a, a really key part of this. Um, I think the, the creativity that it unleashes, um, the economic prosperity that it potentially unleashes, um, the new way of thinking about community that it unleashes is absolutely critical. On the flip side of that, what I, I love and what I see increasingly with the social entrepreneurs um, with whom we work is a real tolerance and acceptance of failure. Um, the issues that they're taking on are so tough, um, they're incredibly complex, and for every three steps forward that they take, they often take one or two back. Um, so a level of comfort and facility with sort of failing, but getting up and trying again, I think is a really key part of the leadership strategies and tactics for the 21st century. Um, I also think an increasing level of comfort with diversity um, and navigating different cultures. Um, the world looks very different today than it did when I was coming of age. So being um, really facile and crossing those sorts of boundaries is really, really important. Um, and I think sort of using the leadership tools of, of soft power, um, recognizing that you sort of can't do things in a top-down autocratic fashion as a leader no longer works, but how do you use persuasion? How do you align incentives? Um, how do you build coalitions and alliances to get done what you need to get done? Um, these are some of the things that we see um, among some of our most successful young leaders. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's promising. Terrific. Jared. I'll, I'll answer this question, David, with, with a, an observation from, from my time in government, which I remember going to work one day, walking into the State Department, and it dawning on me that foreign policy and statecraft are basically very sophisticated and glossy ways of saying troubleshooting. You think about what foreign policy is, it's basically troubleshooting the world's challenges. And it's interesting, when you think about foreign policy or statecraft and, and determine that it's really troubleshooting, it totally leads you to reevaluate tactics. And what you realize is the way to troubleshoot something is in pairs with groups, leveraging different types of tools that you have at your, uh, at your disposal. And I think if there's one message that I could leave behind, we live in a world where challenges are so multidimensional and no one sector or discipline or experience has all the tools and expertise in-house that true leaders of the future are gonna need to lead in groups. You know, this notion of leaders as individuals it will always exist because of the way our societies are structured. Um, but if we're really thinking about, you know, leaders who are going to change the world and build, they're always going to have a partner. You know, they're always going to have an entourage. They're always going to have collaborators. And so the leader of the future is more of a co-founder than a founder. Huh. That's very interesting. How, I, I'm curious. I, I just have to ask this question. If, it's, if foreign policy is about troubleshooting, where does strategy fit in? Uh, well, presumably, if you're troubleshooting something, you sit down and talk about how to troubleshoot it, right. plan it out. Um, but I think that, you know, it, it's interesting. You know, I worked in, in policy planning, which, uh, you know, is the arm of the state, is the State Department's, you know, as the Secretary of State's personal think tank, and you're supposed to uh, develop, develop strategy. I now work in a sector where these companies haven't been around very long. So you talk about a 10-year horizon, these companies will say, we haven't even, we haven't even been around for 10 years. And so uh, strategy in uh, the tech sector looks very different than uh, strategy in government in that it's much more, much more short term. But strategy is a, a, an aspect of troubleshooting, I, absolutely. I, I even remember this as a young boy trying to fix a train set. You sort of sit down and sketch out how you're going to fix it and think it through, and it's much more efficient. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Uh, that uh, is an obvious segue. Train sets, over to you, Jack. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> thinking about this, you, you, you have been, this, thank you for making a special effort to come today and tonight, but I'm, I'm really curious. Uh, you're, I think everybody here is curious to, to learn more from you, your perspective. How do you see the qualities of what's, what's important? You, you, you clearly think and are headed to be toward a leadership role in your generation. Uh, so what I think is there are a few traits I think are really important. The first is the ability to work um, outside your field really effectively and be able to listen to your peers. And so, for example, with my research, a lot of times I'm atrocious at physics and chemistry. 
And my brother, on the other hand, is amazing. And so I always will go to him to ask him a question. And that's how I get around a lot of the problems that I don't know about. And then also, I think, is the ability to communicate your ideas very effectively. Because one interesting story was with the invention of the television, this guy came up with it at Siemens Westinghouse. And in the meeting, he actually got fired because of it and was told he was crazy. And then he went to a different company, formed it, and was able to become a very successful person. And you wonder what was the difference that made it in that um, Siemens meeting. And his inability to communicate his ideas effectively were a major barrier between his idea and realization of it. And so I think effectively communicating your idea to the masses is very important because if you don't communicate your ideas very well, then it's just an idea and no one's going to be able to get behind it. And so I think that would be one of the most important traits is being able to communicate it. <laughs>